Maria and today we are going to be doing a very very important chapter that all of you have been asking me to do that is reaching the age of adolescence and today we are going to be covering this whole chapter in one shot so everybody please make sure that you have your notebooks and pens ready with you please make sure you have your textbooks open with you so that you can make a note of all the important pointers have your water bottles next to you because our plan today is that in one hour or maximum one hour 15 minutes to 20 minutes we need to wind up today's chapter right so i hope all of you are excited and very quickly everyone huge shout out because our channel hit 50 50,000 subscribers right and all of this would not have happened if it wasn't for you so well done everybody quick chain of emojis with a lot of clapping emojis here right because as you know 50k is not an easy target but we achieved it and now it's time for our next target right we can hit a you have a huger target of maybe 100,000 subscribers or we can start small and say, okay, now we should have 60,000 subscribers. Whatever works for you. Which target do you want? Do you want 100,000 or do you want 60,000? Yes, everybody, let me know very quickly in the chat. What do you think? And everyone, I hope all of you have liked this video. Today, we'll have a like target of 100 likes on this video. So very quickly, everyone who is here, make sure that you like this video and tell me that you have liked it. Only then I'm going to get started with the session, okay? Jaldi, jaldi, go ahead and like the video. Yes, I can see Manjeet and Harsimran and a lot of them saying, ma'am, 75k uh, is a good target to keep. And let's have 75k and once we hit 75, we'll go to 100k. And then we will do party also. Yes, yes, we will do party. 60k, yes, small steps will cover a large distance. Very good. Good afternoon to everybody who has just joined me. We are going to be doing reaching the age of adolescence in one shot. Yes. Radha, I've already taken one class. We'll be having more class classes about it. So don't worry. Okay, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. So I hope that all of you have liked this video. Yes. Do not forget to like and very quickly, everybody. I hope my audio, my video and my screen and what I've been writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is, please make sure that you let me know in the comment section. Is it good to go? And for all of you who are very, very new to the class, probably the first time you are attending my class, I would like to welcome all of you. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel because as you know, and you will get to know by the end of today's class that 6, 7, 8th grade is the channel where all the amazing things happen. So do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Very important. Yes, I can see a lot of new names in the chat. Yes, Anirudh is new. Very good. For all my new bachas, well done. Yes, Kushu, I can see your messages. But I would have missed it right so again today everybody I have some simple thing okay simple thing to understand in the class today because we have quite a bit to cover and maybe we are a little short on time I'm going to be teaching you bits and pieces and if I don't take your doubts between my explanation that does not mean that I'm ignoring you or I'm not replying to your doubts I will have places where I will stop and take doubts okay so all of you make sure that you're writing your doubts down and wherever we have doubt boards that is where I'll be taking your doubt all right beginning may only if doubts are there Sha uh, Sanu you can ask me now but I hope if it's a content related doubt just stay tuned to the class I'll be explaining it. So don't worry. Okay. Ma'am, this is an easy chapter. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. Very good. All right. Is this for lecture in class 8? Yes, it is. Like I told you, I am not ignoring anybody. The chat is running a little fast for me. That is why. Okay. So are we excited? How's the Josh for the class? We'll get started very, very soon. Quick Josh level check and I'm getting started. Yes. Ma'am, I'm very excited. Amazing, amazing. Let's start, ma'am. Yes, of course, we are going to get started. In the meanwhile, of course, as you all know, I hope all of you have registered for the parent club that's happening on Wednesday, right? So please make sure that all of you register now. Link is there in the description box where Chetna ma'am is going to be talking about goal setting. So please make sure all of you register for this. This is very, very important and you're going to have a lot of fun where you're going to learn about why goal setting is necessary, right? All right, amazing. And for those of you who are asking me, ma'am, is this a minty quiz? It is not a minty quiz. So, of course, everyone, today we're going to be learning about reaching the age of adolescence. 
So now when we talk about adolescence, I'm not going to jump right into it, okay? There are a few basic things that you need to know. Now the way I'm going to teach you is going to be very different from the way you will see it in NCRT. So now I, I know that a lot of you might be thinking, ma'am, you're teaching some concepts from in between, you are teaching something from here and there. Don't get worried about topics. I will teach you in a way you will learn it as a story, right? Because we are going to be talking today about what happens in life, right? And how does life begin? Now we know that for life to begin, we know that first of all, there are gametes. We've learned this in our chapter, Reaching the uh, Reproduction, where there are male and female gametes that come together and they will form a single cell structure called a zygote. Now this single cell structure that is there, which is the zygote will undergo so many changes that at the end of it, we see that it forms an embryo. Now, is this embryo made up of single cells or many cells? In the chat, everybody, are we made up of single cells or many cells? An embryo that is there. Very simple question. Yes, single cells or many cells? Exactly, they are made up of many, many cells put together, right? So when you think about it, a single cell zygote will undergo so many changes that it will form a multicellular embryo, right? And we know that if I look closely into it, we know that there are many, many, many cells, right? Now, each of these cells, right? So this is one single cell. What is the structure that I've highlighted on the screen? This dark pink color structure that you see. What is there inside this? What is the structure that I'm scratching on? Can you tell me? So we have the cells and we have a darkened part in the center. Yes, this is the nucleus. Now what will I find inside the nucleus? We know that there are many cells. Cells have nucleus. And what is there inside the nucleus? Yes? What do we find inside the nucleus? We will find something very important. Yes, we will find the genetic material or we will find the chromosomes, right? So we know that chromosomes are these kind of structures that we will find inside the nucleus that contain the genetic material. Now, one thing you need to understand here is that every organism that is there, they have a fixed number of chromosomes. Now, it is not that all the genetic material that is there is made into one big chromosome. But rather, we see that the genetic material is found, right? And all this information will be distributed amongst different chromosomes that are there. And every organism has a fixed number of chromosomes, okay? Now, when you talk about human beings, do any of you know how many chromosomes are there in our body? Yes, how many chromosomes do we find in our body? And this is something you will have to remember for the rest of your life, okay? Do not ever forget it. Yes, very good, very good, exactly. So we have 46 chromosomes, right? So we see that in humans, okay, write this number down, very important. We see that there are 46 chromosomes, or we see that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now we see that one pair or one set of chromosomes will come from the father and one will come from the mother. Now in this 46 or in this 23, you need to remember this. The first 22 pairs that I'm highlighting, right? Now the first 22 pairs are common amongst all individuals. Whether it is you, whether it is, you know, any, uh, me or if it is anyone else, right? These first 22 pairs are common. Or another way of me putting this would be that this first 22 pair is common for both males as well as females, right? So first 22 pairs are common amongst both males and females. Now, if the first 22 pairs or the first 44 are common between males and females, why is there a difference that we observe between maybe a boy and a girl? What makes the difference that we observe? Yes, the first 44 or the first 22 pairs are also known as autosomes. Very good. So we also call them as autosomes. Very good. Yes. Then what makes the difference? Very quickly. The hint is already there on the screen. Exactly. So we see that the last pair that you observe here, right? The last pair is what makes the difference. Very good, Pallavi. 
So the last pair or what we say the 23rd pair, right? So the 23rd pair is what we call as the sex chromosome, right? So we see that the sex chromosome is what determines the sex or the gender of the parent, right? And uh, of the individual. And this is what actually determines, right? Whether the individual, the zygote will be a boy or a girl. It's the last pair. Now, if the sex chromosome or the 23rd pair is XY, so normally what I will write it and maybe throughout today's session, I might keep writing it. If I say 44 plus XY, that means that it is a male or a boy because 45 and 46 is X and Y. Similarly, if it is XX, as you see here, we see that 44 plus XX, this will be a female, right? Yes, XY means boy and XX means girl. But the thing is, a baby is born as a boy or a baby is born as a girl. So when is it decided that this particular baby is going to be a boy or this particular baby is going to be a girl, right? So very importantly, you need to understand this, yes? So when is it decided? Or I will say, when is the sex determined? Can you tell me in the chat? Yes, very good. It is determined during fertilization, right? When one chromosomes come out of each one. Okay, Manjeet, I think you are giving me the concept, right? Now, yes, a lot of you are asking me about transgenders. I will get to that point, okay? But first, let's focus on boy and girl. Then we'll get to transgender, okay? Yes. So now we know that males and females have 46, 46 each, right? So we see that both males and females will have 46, 46. And we know that in human beings, sexual reproduction will take place, right? So we know that there will be sexual reproduction. And if sexual reproduction is taking place, that means that two parents are involved. And we know that there are two gametes which are involved. What are gametes? Nothing but the reproductive cells. Now we see that the female will produce the ovum and the male will produce the sperm. Now notice how under ovum and sperm I have written only 23 and 23. Now we know that every cell in the body, right, has 46 chromosomes. Yes, all cells should have 46 chromosomes. Can I say that? As a matter of fact, if you look at it, almost all the cells of our body will have 46 chromosomes. But only gametes, okay? Only gametes that are there will have 23 chromosomes. Are we clear with this? Are we clear with the fact that most cells in our body will have 46 chromosomes? But the gametes that are there, which are produced by the reproductive organs, will have only 23 chromosomes. Now let's understand why only 23 chromosomes are there. Because we know fertilization takes place where there is fusion of male and female gamete, right? So we know that this one sperm will fuse with the egg resulting in the formation of zygote. And here basically the nucleus is what will fuse. That means 23 from the egg, 23 from the sperm will fuse giving us a zygote that has 46 chromosomes. And during this fusion is when the sex of the baby is determined. So we know that every egg that is produced by the female is going to have X, X chromosome, right? So we know that there is a pair of XX, but because you know the eggs or the gametes will have only half the number, it will be 22 plus X, 22 plus X. Are we clear with this? Are we clear? Are we, are we clear with why it is 22 plus X? Because see, if you understand this concept, I'm telling you your 10th grade, your 11th grade, your 12th grade, it will be cakewalk for you, right? Yes, very good. You have understood why it is 22 plus X. Similarly, when you look at sperms, right, which is the male gamete, we see that this here will have a different combination, right? So some sperms will be 22 plus X, while some will be 22 plus Y. So in this case, when you have a look at it, we see that some sperms have X while some sperms have Y because their 23rd pair that is there is a XY pair. Which is why if I were to ask you, which gamete actually decides the sex of the baby? What will you give me as an answer? Which gamete determines the sex of the baby? And this is a question that will come in the exam, right? So you need to tell me which gamete 
determines sex of the baby. Read the question and give me the answer because I am seeing some different different answers. Very good. It is the male gamete. Don't say Y, don't say X, okay? But when I'm asking you which gamete, it is the sperm that determines it or the male gamete that determines it, right? Because we know that not all the gametes produced by the testes or not all the male gametes are the same, right? Some are X, some are Y. Which is why when fertilization takes place, this is a very comprehensive chart that you can understand this easily. So let's assume there are two sperms, one sperm with X, one sperm with Y. And the egg is the same, right? Egg is the same, eggs, eggs have X chromosome, yes? So in this case, what will happen if the sperm with X chromosome will fuse, right? Then we know that at the end of the day, sperm is a X, egg is X, baby is having 44 plus XX. That means what is the sex of this baby if it is 44 plus XX? What is the sex of the baby? Very quickly. It is a girl. Very good. So if it is 44 plus XX, it will be a girl. But at the same time, right, so I'm going to use maybe a different color for Y, right? So I'm going to maybe use blue color. Now, if it is Y, then you know, you have sperm which is fusing with a sperm with Y chromosome, egg with X chromosome. Baby now has 44 plus XY. And what is it going to be? This is going to be a boy. So everybody take a quick screenshot of this slide, right? This is going to be very, very important in understanding sex determination. Right? And this is what we mean by sex determination. So sex determination is nothing but a process, right? Or it's a phenomena wherein we understand how the sex of the baby is determined, right? You can make notes as I explain or you can always take a screenshot of it and I will anyway be sharing this PDF with you on Telegram. So don't worry about it, okay? So are we clear so far with sex determination? Now, this is a concept that comes much later. But if you understand from here, right, the rest of it becomes very simple. Are we clear? Give me a quick thumbs up in the chat and we'll move ahead, okay? Yes, exactly. It is there in the textbook, but flow-wise, I am just teaching you a little differently, okay? All right. Ma'am, can I ask a doubt? Okay, yes. So, I'll do a quick doubt board section here. We have a lot more to learn, okay? That is why I don't want to spend too much time in doubt board. Yes. Very good, Aradhana. Very good. Anybody has doubts, quickly ask me. Two more minutes and we have to move through the next part. Yes. Any doubts or shall I move ahead? Ma'am is being stereotypical. No, that is the first pen I found. Okay. I am not being stereotypical. Ma'am, how are twins born? See, twins are born and something when we talk about twins, that is a little beyond the scope because that's something you learn in reproduction. Now see, when you talk about identical twins and fraternal twins, that's normally during fertilization, right? Sometimes two sperms will fuse with two eggs or sometimes the zygote will split into half, right? So that is something that is there. Mitosis, meiosis, bacha, can I take it towards the end? I want to take doubts which are relevant to the chapter because we have a one shot. So questions that might be outside the bounds of what we are going to learn today, I will take it to the I'll take it later on. Debansh, uh, Debash Muni, I will be telling you what this is. Okay? Yes. Um, transgender, see, transgenders are individuals who might be born as a boy or a girl, but later on they identify themselves as an opposite sex. So if there's an individual who's born as a boy, but later on over time identifies as a girl, right? Then there what happens is that they are, you know, sometimes they believe in that way. So simply put, it's like that. But normally, most often than not, in normal cases, individuals, again I'm saying, in normal cases, individuals are always born as a boy or a girl, okay? Yes. So now let's move on. So now we know that babies are born either as boy or girl, right? And we know that eventually, as soon as they are born, they enter into their different stages of life, right? So they enter different stages of their life. Now, can you tell me how many stages of life that are there, they enter into their life cycle, right? So, how many stages are there? Can you tell me first, how many stages of life that are there? Okay, Pallavi is telling me, ma'am, three, four, okay. Yes, four, all right, three stages, very good, okay. Six, four, fine, a lot of answers coming my way. So, let's see, all right, let's see what are the different stages. We see that there is infancy. 
and that is when we are babies and as we grow as babies right we know that we enter into the next stage of life that is childhood then after we reach childhood that's around the phase i would say maybe from the age of maybe 3 to 4 all the way till maybe 9 10 11 years of age then once we move into 12 and 13 years of age we reach a phase called as the teenage phase or the adolescence phase right and then of course we move on to the next phase which is the early adulthood which is your early 20s then of course we move into middle age and then we move on to old age right so in this case we see there are so many stages of life now the question is why do we have so many stages why do we have so many stages of life i mean why is it that if we are born as a baby why can't we immediately become an adult and then you know start going about our day why why should we have all this you know childhood adolescence early adulthood why do we need to have all these things why can't we just become an adult have you ever thought of it yes ma'am in my book it says three it's okay i'm just going a little bit, bit more into detail don't worry about that yes we are changing exactly different changes takes place at different stages exactly now again i want to bring another question for which i know you know the answer right why is adulthood a very important stage for an organism okay now we're not talking about in personal life and all okay we're talking about in biology right why is it important to be in the adulthood phase for an organism there's a very important process that takes place exactly of me very good because adult organisms right or let me put it simply adult humans have the ability to reproduce right reproduce and make more of their young ones so in this case if you see adulthood is very very important because that is when the body and the mind becomes capable of reproduction now the thing is like most of you have told me right we know that there are a lot of changes that start taking place right from infancy so when you talk about it if i take the stage of infancy right so most of our parts of our body is still not developed right and we know that it undergoes various development stages or it undergoes a lot of changes and development and that's when we go into childhood but in childhood if you see we know that our brain also develops a little bit here during from infancy to childhood there's brain development that takes place but there is no reproductive development right a child is incapable of reproduction because the body has not developed for it okay so this is something that you need to understand what is infancy it is the phase of life where you are born as an infant or a young baby right so this is a young baby phase okay very simple and easy one young baby phase now this is childhood where no reproductive phase or the body is incapable of reproduction now the thing is a child cannot overnight develop the ability to reproduce that is why between childhood and adulthood we have a phase that comes here right yes very good i saw the answer that is adolescence right so adolescence is most often known as the teenage years which exist between your 13 years of age to 19 years of age right and we often define adolescence as the transitional stage that exists between childhood and adulthood and we say that during adolescence we attain reproductive maturity so everybody write this down as I dictate this to you, okay? I will dictate this to you and write this down. Very, very important. So adolescence can be defined as a transitional stage, right? Between childhood to adulthood where we attain reproductive maturity or yes, you can also say sexual maturity, right? So here this is a transitional change where a lot of changes are constantly happening. Now here I got a very interesting question, right? Lot of you have asked me, yes? Now the thing is, some of you are asking me, ma'am, what is puberty, right? So puberty and adolescence is a common you know, misunderstanding that happens. Now puberty that is there is often defined as the point of life, okay? So we say that it is the point of life 
or the time in life where the body or the boy or the girl becomes sexually mature, where the body attains that reproductive maturity or sexual maturity. The start of it, I would say. While understand this, puberty is point of life. Now in some individuals, now understand this, okay, if I say for some individuals at 13 years of age, it's not that for everybody across the world it is 30. It happens and a lot of factors are dependent upon when an individual attains or, hit, or hits puberty, right? We often say that this individual has hit puberty. So that is what we mean by it. Now it can vary from 10 to 12 years in some cases 13, in some cases 14, right? It differs from individual to individual, right? You have nothing to worry about. Now if you are someone who is watching this thinking have I attained puberty, have I not attained puberty, you will definitely know and if you are somebody who attained it much early, it's not a problem. If you are somebody who may have gotten it a little later, it's still not a problem, right? It differs from individual to individual. So are we aware of the different between puberty and adolescence this is a question that you will get in your exam what is adolescence and what is puberty right this difference they will ask you so adolescence is nothing but the time period right it is a time period between childhood and adulthood while what is puberty Puberty is nothing but the time of life or the point of life wherein the individual, so I'm not, I'm not writing it fully, okay, so that could be some gra grammatical errors, please don't mind, where the individual attains sexual maturity. So are we clear with puberty and are we clear with adolescence? Yes, you can write transitional stage also. I missed that out. Are we clear? Give me a quick thumbs up in the chat, everybody. Yes, Elisha, please tell me. Please ask me relevant doubts, okay? Don't ask me some doubts which are, you know, not relevant to the chapter. Like Afni, twins, triplets and all of that, I will maybe take it up a little later. So don't worry, okay? I'll take it up towards the end of the class, alright, because we are a little short on time, that is why I'm rushing a little bit faster. Nitya, what are you not clear with? Yes, whatever you're not clear with, let me know, I will explain that part, okay? Alright, okay, so now we'll move on to understanding. Before I go ahead, here's a quick question for all of you. The male and females will unite to form what? A, B, C, D, quickly tell me. Embryo, zygote, fetus or ova? Simple question. What is the correct answer? All of you know the answer to this, easy peasy. Yes, male and female zygote will fuse to form zy. I mean, female gamete will fuse to form zygote, right? So now you know that in Baiju, so for those of you who are new to class and maybe you're watching my class for the first time, now you know how important it is to say subscribe to our channel, right? Because in our channel is where all the magic happens. So please make sure that all of you, right, subscribe to our channel and all the important playlists are available. We have smart playlists as well. So do not forget to subscribe. Yes, Nitya, I will tell you the difference between puberty and adolescence in just 5 minutes. But I will explain it to you. Okay, so I will get to it. But I understand that most of you are clear with it. So I am going to proceed a little bit further. And then I will go back and take all of your doubts once again. Maybe we will do a doubt board. Cool. So now we have understood that this is adolescence and this is puberty. And we know that there are some changes which takes place, right? So we know that there are changes that takes place during this adolescence phase where somehow our body is able to attain sexual maturity or reproductive maturity. Now what are these changes, right? So what are these changes? Now broadly the changes in adolescence can be categorized into three. It can be categorized as physical changes, it can be categorized as emotional changes and last but not the least, they can be categorized as secondary sexual changes. Now some of you are asking me ma'am what is the secondary sexual changes, I'm going to explain it to you in just a bit so just stay tuned, I'll be finishing this off, okay? So first and foremost, I will go ahead and talk about physical changes. Now when I use the word physical, right? What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Can you tell me? When I use the word physical, what is the first word that comes to your mind? What is it? Can you tell me in the chat? Yes. All right, everyone. Okay, shape, body. Very good. Very good. Most of you are close to the answer, right? 
Exactly. Very good, everyone. Very good. Body shape, the physical structure of our body, right? So when we talk about, yes, exactly, Yashmir, the physical features that we see from the outside. That is what we call as physical changes. So that way, if you think about it, when you are studying physical changes, always think about it that they are something that you can observe it, right? They're easy to observe. Observable features is also another way that I would use, right? Very good. Physical structures is the right way. So what are all the physical changes that we see? Now we see that there is the first change that is there, which is increase in height, right? So the first change that we observe is increase in height. Now when we are children, right, we know that we are all very small and you know maximum we'll be very tiny and we know that a person or an individual is a child and the first way we associate it is with respect to their height, right? So when you see a small person and you most often than not you think that they're a child, right? So we see that the first change we observe is increase in height. Now increase in height, why does it happen as biology student you should know right now normally once an individual hits puberty right what is puberty time of life when an individual attains is sexual maturity now when an individual hits puberty we see that there is elongation of the bones now the bones will start to elongate right so if the bones were looking something like this now they will start to elongate or they will become longer. Now as they become longer, they will become taller, right? And we see that there is a reason why this elongation of bones happen, right? So we see that this happens because of a particular hormone. Now don't worry if you don't know what a hormone is, I will tell you in just a bit, right? So we see that this happens due to a particular hormone known as the growth hormone that regulates the elongation of the bones, right? Now we see that, again, like I think Manjeet has asked me a question that I was going to answer anyway. Yes, so now we see that the rate at which this increase in height happens is different for boys and it's different for girls. Okay, now we see that in boys, right, we see that especially, I mean, in boys, we see that initially the growth is slow. All right, so in the initial days, so easy way to remember this is in this manner. All right, so you have boys and girls and in initial days and I'll say later days, right? So in the initial days, we see that there is law in, in boys, we see that the production of growth hormone is a little slow and development happens a little slowly, right? While in girls, it is very rapid, which is why normally if you see in six standard, seven standard and all, no, most often than not, the girls are taller, right? Yes. So in we see that the girls are a little more taller and some of the boys are a little more shorter. But later on in life, right, we see that in girls, the development happens faster, okay, especially with respect to increase in height, we see that they attain their maximum height faster, which is why in the later days, we see that in girls, it will become slow and in boys, it will become rapid, right? And the maximum height, yes, so I told you here in the later days, the girls will attain their maximum height. And what does the maximum height of an individual depend on? Do we all have standard heights? All girls are 5 feet 5 inches, all boys are 6 inches. No, different friends of ours will have different height. And yes, it depends upon the genetic characters of our parents. Okay, so it depends upon the genetic characters of the parents. Now, if you look at my kids, my mom is uh, 4 feet 11 inches, okay? But my dad is maybe roughly around 5 feet 6 inches or 5 feet 7. And as a result, I am only 5'2". I started growing very fast in my initial days when I was in 6th, 7th grade and all. But I attained my maximum height in 8th grade or 9th grade and after that I have not grown tall. I am just 5, you know, 5 feet 1 or 5 feet 2 maximum, right? Yes. So in girls, if you look at it, right, we see that initially their growth is faster, but they attain their maximum height soon. While in the case of boys, we see that initial days are slow, but eventually they pick up and they attain their maximum height. Now, when do these changes start happening? Like I told you, for a lot of you, it differs from age to age and multiple factors are there, okay, as to why that is there. Yes, a lot of you are saying, ma'am, I'm also 5'2". Yes, yes, that happens. Now, one thing to understand is that when increase in height takes place, right? 
we see that there is a especially when there is the initial days of adolescence we observe a growth spurt right so i'm sure all of you would have seen this term growth spurt how many of you have seen this term growth spurt yes how many of you have seen the term growth spurt that is there yes if you are small no problem okay nothing wrong with being small nothing wrong with being tall your height is the best okay don't ever get concerned about your height no ma'am i have not heard okay no problem see normally what happens is that during those initial phases of growth right especially in the initial cases of increase in height we see that growth hormone that is there and we observe it normally in the initial days for girls and in the later days for boys they are produced in large amounts so it's almost like how you know if you take fevicol and you squeeze it hard it will all squirt out right everything will go everywhere large amount of it will come out so think about it like that so at times we see that there is a growth spurt right and we see that that's because of the increase in growth hormone that is produced ma'am how to increase height i now by now you know right now you know that your height is already what do you say it is determined by your genetic characters right maybe if you things can help in increasing it a little but not too much okay it'll not that if you are if you you know you are maybe 5 2 5 not suddenly become 6 feet tall and all that doesn't happen okay your maximum height will be dependent on your parents so are we clear the important points you must know take a screenshot if need be because after i change it you will not be able to see the slide so one thing you need to understand here is that especially in the case of increase in height we the points you need to know is that there's elongation of bones growth hormone is produced and you also need to know that in boys it happens slow in the beginning fast later in girls fast in the beginning slow later okay very good very good now moving on to point number 2 that is change in shape all right so the next physical uh, thing that we observe physical change that we observe is change in shape now in boys and girls we see that change in shape happens differently all right so in boys mainly we see that they have broad shoulders right so we see that their shoulders start to become broader while in women we see that the pelvis region right that starts to become wider or we say widening widening of the hip region right so now in boys mainly the chest region that is there right the chest region starts to other we see that the shoulders and the chest region starts to become broader because there will be more and more muscles that get accommodated and as a result we also know that there needs to be chest space to inhale large amount of air can be accommodated in the chest right so that again is something that we need to know now widening of hips is something we observe in females because at the end of the day we know that females are the ones that carry the young baby and the development of the young baby takes place inside right which is why the hip region or the waist region becomes wider so this change in shape is something that you need to know yes chest and shoulder become more broader and we see that there is muscular development in boys now when we move on to the next thing here we see that there is change in voice as well okay and again voice is different in both males and females right so when you talk about males now you know that in males or in boys especially if you see right voice is most often often than not deep pitched and sometimes it is hoarse right we see that it is hoarse yes while on the other hand we know that in the case of girls we see that it tends to be high pitched and at times it will even be shrill now i'm sure all of you would have learnt about what is pitch i'm sure saurav sir would have taught you in sound right how boys and girls have different sound it de depends on the pitch saurav sir has already taught you in sound please go check that out so we know that deep pitch in boys and high pitch in girls which is almost shrill right now why does this happen because of the development development of the voice box right so we see that there is development of voice box now what is a voice box known as it is known as the larynx right and that is why we observe that there is difference in the changes or we see that there is difference in change in sound okay now we also see another very important thing here 
Now we also see that the voice box starts to enlarge a little bit, right? As they developed, it will become enlarged. And we see that there's a particular cartilage or there's a particular structure in the voice box that enlarges specifically in boys. And we see that in the neck region, it comes out as a protrusion, right? So this protrusion is nothing but the Adam's apple that we see mainly in boys right we don't see it in girls but we see it in boys exactly uh Aina, it is adam's apple which we find only in boys right so please make sure that when we are writing about change in voice these pointers that i have written is all there because this is very very important and we see that at the onset of puberty right we see that for some boys their voice will crack Right, I'm sure all of you, if you, if some of you have experienced it, I'm sure most boys would have experienced it. Sometimes the voice cracks or it becomes hoarse. That is nothing but, you know, it's not a problem. You might sound a little uh, like that, but it's okay. It's part of the process, right? So it's very, very important. Ma'am, larynx spelling is wrong. Oh yeah, sorry guys. Very, very sorry. So larynx is, yes. So this is very, very important to understand something we observe in boys, okay? Yes, not a problem, not a problem. It's just part of the process, right? See, one thing to understand is that especially during adolescence, and I know most of you are in this phase, okay? It gets a little scary. So many things are changing in your body. So many changes are happening internally. Some changes you are observing externally. Things become a little scary because you're like, what is happening to me? I was not like this when I was a child, right? And later on, when you go into adulthood again, you will see that your body is again going to change. And it all becomes a little scary. So here in this class, my main objective and the reason why I'm going a little bit slow also with this is because you need to understand that this is normal. This is something that happens in everybody. It might not be the same, but it happens to everyone. It's a process. Just let it be. Love your bodies no matter what, right? So that's very, very important. Ma'am, what is protrusion? Protrusion is nothing but bulging when it comes out. That is what is a protrusion, okay? All right. So now we will move on to the last physical change that we're going to talk about, which is increased activity of sweat glands and sebaceous gland, right? So now very, very heavy terminology is coming in, sweat glands and sebaceous glands. So the first thing as science students you should know is what is a gland? So what is a gland? Gland is nothing but a group of cells that have the ability so that have the ability to secrete certain chemical substances, okay? So this is what we understand as a gland. Gland is gland? No, you should know what gland is, okay? That is why I'm writing the definition. Now you have something known as sweat glands and then you know that you have something known as sebaceous glands, okay? Now sweat glands are nothing but those which produce sep. Uh, sweat while sebaceous glands are nothing but those which produce sebum or something which is known as oil right it's sebum is nothing but something known as oil now oil that is there or the sebum that is there is normally essential to keep our skin naturally moisturized and to make sure that it has that certain glow that is there right which is why sebum is extremely necessary but during your adolescence phase there is increased activity that means the sweat gland that's why some of some people might experience excessive sweating because it starts to become more right and of course the sebaceous gland will start to produce more and more oil which is why sometimes what will happen is that we see that you know our skin might look extremely oily and if you look at some advertisements also they'll be endorsing it right saying you can use this face wash for oily skin and all of that or oil prone skin so that is all with respect to this okay now on the other hand when you look at it when I say increased activity of sweat and sebaceous gland we see that mainly the sebaceous gland that is there which produces the sebum is normally released out through the openings through which the our body hair comes out right so we see that it is released out like this and then it is distributed in the skin but at times this can get clogged now, when your sebaceous gland or the opening of the sebaceous gland gets clogged, it can lead to formation of pimples or it can result in the formation of acne, 
right? So acne and pimples are very, very common, all right? So they are extremely common in adolescence phase because your body is changing, a lot of hormones are being produced. So there are going to be pimples at times on the face and you know, there's going to be acne, but these are things to get too worried about, right? You look at it as a scar or you look at it as a problem, but nonetheless, whatever happens, right? It's important to understand that there is a change, right? Yes. Ma'am said, no, they are not a type of endocrine glands. Harsimran and I'll tell you about it, okay? So, difference between acne and pimple. Acne is normally formed when the, see the pores that are there, they get clogged, right? So, when they get clogged, we see that it results in a tiny bump forming acne. But when that acne gets infected due to some bacteria that are there on the surface, right? It results, it becomes very red, right? And it becomes a little painful. That is what we call as pimples right so normally we see that acne does not have that reddish kind of thing but pimples are normally reddish and they're a little painful which is why it is very important that we regularly keep washing our face regularly keep our skin clean right so this is very very important now with this if you see i have covered all the physical changes so are we clear everybody are we clear yes are we clear what are hormones? I'm going to be teaching that in just a bit. So just stay tuned. Okay. Any more doubts? Any doubts in whatever I have taught so far? Don't ask me some doubt from some other chapter. I don't have time today. That is why I'm not addressing those doubts. Otherwise, you know me. I explain all your doubts. And I definitely have a separate doubt clearing session for this chapter also. Because today it is very, very important to understand this. About gland, thyroid gland, all of that, please wait. I will be telling you. So just stay tuned. Okay, just, just stay tuned. I'll do a doubt clearing session anyway. So don't worry. Okay, very good. I can see most of you don't have doubts. Isha, you're a little bit late, but nonetheless, I still have quite a bit to teach. Okay, yes, I will do it in NCRT session. I'll mostly be doing it tomorrow only. So don't worry about it. How to prevent acne pimples? Wash your face regularly. Very important. Yes. So now we will move on to emotional changes, okay? Yes, Adhya, see, if I miss out on some doubts today, you can ask me tomorrow again. Today, let's learn the chapter, okay? Let's just focus on learning. Whatever doubts are there, if it's not been clear today, I will clear it again tomorrow. I'm doing the NCRT session. All right, now moving on to the next one, right? The next one that is there are emotional changes. Now, emotional changes are more or less something that I will call as mental changes right or changes in the mind now the thing is along with this time right so as our body undergoes development our brain is also developing now this development is not the brain development that we observe in childhood okay our brain actually starts to expand during our um, it starts to expand we see that we become more inquisitive during this period of time right so we see that during this period, we observe a lot of positive changes, such as we become more inquisitive, we are more, you know, like how you guys are more curious, you want to learn, you want to know more, all those changes happen here. And along the same time, we also see that we become, you know, there's increased brain activity. You're constantly open to learning, which is why during the adolescence phase and early adulthood, we normally say it's the best time to learn things because your brain has the capability to take it all up. So brain capacity becomes improved, right? Is this why we do overthinking? Yes, most often than not, this is the reason, right? So here we also see that as a result, we experience mood swings, right? We see that we become a little moody. Sometimes we don't feel like talking to people. Sometimes we feel like, you know, you're overly happy and you're so happy you'll be running around. But sometimes you feel a little low on energy, right? And like Harsimran is asking me, ma'am, do we do overthinking? Yes, this is one of the reasons why, because your brain is, you know, it's moving at hyper speed, right? And along with this, at times, you could get a little defensive, you could become aggressive. Because slowly what's happening is you are also becoming independent, right? You have developed your decision-making skills. Now you know what you want. As a child, you are very confused. It's so difficult to pick ice cream flavor only when you're a child. No, when I was a child, I couldn't pick what I want. So I would always say chocolate because every other option seemed very tough. But there were days now, especially, you know, when I was maybe in ninth grade or 10th grade, when I'd be like, oh, today I feel like eating pineapple ice cream or, oh, today I feel like doing this. Those small things that are there, right? 
those are decision making things small decisions that you are already making like today i will attend aishwarya ma'am's class because i have to study adolescence chapter that is also a decision that you are making so this right here is very very important right but at the same time aggression is also something that we experience sometimes when our friend might accidentally drop our pen or sometimes when this happens there are ways in which we may might not react well right sometimes you'll be like why did you do that but that's not the way to talk to people right and as my students i will tell you something and i want you to take this to your heart okay do not ever ever disrespect a person who you are talking to they might not make sense or sometimes you will feel like what are they saying ma'am i am not able to understand it is not logical but you will always always treat them with kindness and it is not something you will you need to start practicing right you need to start practicing all of these things so it is important and that is one of the reasons why i am spending some time here because there are feelings of anxiety feelings where you feel very hyper like oh i need to do this i need to do that all these things will start kicking in and here is a time when all of you need to open up to your parents open up to your teachers whoever you feel comfortable make sure that you are always kind to people you are always making sure that you are opening up right so if you are if you feel like ma'am i am feeling mood swings all of these things are normal okay they are very very normal it's not some abnormal thing right it's normal your body is undergoing changes and let's say that maybe you had a fight or maybe you were you know disrespectful at some time always go and apologize own up to your mistakes okay do that don't ever be like i did that but i will not say sorry or i will not own up to it no when if it's your if it's your fault openly go tell that person i'm very sorry so that way they will at least be like oh my god my friend understands that she did something wrong or he did something wrong it goes both ways right so as my students i spend some time here because it's very important that you learn this and what you learn today are the things that as an adult you will pick up right so with that we've looked at emotional changes very good very good now let's move on to the last part right last part of it of the changes that happen inside our body which are the secondary sexual changes now one thing you need to understand is what are sexual changes right what do you understand by the word sexual changes then i will tell you okay then we will go on later into more and more things yes so what do you understand by sexual changes can you tell me in the chat ma'am what are negative changes negative changes are nothing but like mood swings or you know stuff like feeling overwhelmed those are the things what we call as you know um negative changes yes development of gonads reproductive change okay Yes, very good, Ananya. Very good. So, sexual changes are those changes that differentiate an individual as a boy or a girl. Okay. So that is what we mean by se sexual changes. Now here we see that there are two kinds okay it might go behind me so don't worry yes abdul you are correct absolutely now in this case we see that there are two kinds you have primary sexual changes and you have secondary sexual changes all right now i know the secondary is behind me but i'll write it here now primary second primary sexual changes or primary sexual characteristics that we see are nothing but the development or i'd say the presence of the reproductive organs right so they are the development of the reproductive organs yes so this is what we mean by it and better way of saying sexual changes i will use the word sexual characteristics that is a better word right and i will define this as characteristics so this is a easier way to understand i feel otherwise the other one becomes very tricky so characteristics that differentiate a boy and a girl is what we call as sexual characteristics primary sexual characteristics include presence of your reproductive organ if testis is there you know it is male if ovary is there you know it's female then what are secondary sexual characteristics first thing to understand what are secondary sexual characteristics okay so these are nothing but characteristics that we find on the outside that helps us understand right so that helps us understand who which individual is a boy or a girl 
Ma'am did not understand. Okay, let me quickly explain this. So we have something known as sexual characteristics, right? Now sexual characteristics are what? How do you know that an individual is a boy or a girl? So those characteristics that helps us identify an individual as a boy or a girl is what we call as sexual characteristics. Now this right here can be primary. What is the most basic way in which you can differentiate as a boy or a girl? Presence of reproductive organs, right? So we know that presence of reproductive organs will help us differentiate an individual as a boy or a girl. So we know that if testis is present, it is a boy. If ovary is present, it is a girl. But normally, if you look at somebody, you will get to know if it is a boy or a girl, right? So in this case, we are able to do that because of the secondary sexual characters. Now secondary sexual characters are those which are physically observable, right? They are physically observable. Yes, exactly. They are some physical characteristics that are there. So in the case of boys, we see that there is development of facial hair or beard in males. Now a lot of you not like if you are 14 years, you will have a full fledged beard like this. Okay, like how you know we have some actors who have heavy beards. It's not like in the beginning only there will be so many of it. Yes, but at the same time, it will eventually grow. Now in the case of females, we see that there is enlargement of breasts. What are breasts? They are nothing but the mammary glands, right? Mammary glands or the milk producing glands, okay? Now normally in school, there's a lot of hush hush about it, but there's nothing to do hush hush. It's normal, right? It's normal. It is a, you know, a bodily biological feature, nothing to do hush hush about. And as my students, please don't do hush hush around it, okay? So they are nothing but milk producing glands that are there and we know that enlargement of breasts and development of mammary glands need to take place because at the end of the day we know that once the baby is born the baby is fed the mother's milk which is why the breasts have to enlarge it right so that is something that is there and something that we observe in both males and females which can be a little bit of a scary thing at first but it's again very normal is development of hair hair in the armpit region, hair in the pubic region, all those things are very normal, nothing to get scared or I, you know, worried about, right? So these are some of the sexual changes that we observe. Ma'am, menstruation, I'm going to explain in some time. Ma'am, what about uh, transgender identified people, right? So in the case of transgenders, like I told you, they are either born as a boy or a girl, but they identify oppositely. So when that happens, and in some cases, they maybe undergo certain procedures to look as the opposite gender, right? Yes, I know, normally that happens because of all the, mm, you know, laughing and sometimes the sneering and all of that happens. But it's important to know. When you know, you'll be less scared about the changes that are happening, right? It's not something very scary. So are we clear, everybody? Are we clear with this? Yes, all right. Okay. Okay. Are we clear? Yes. So now we know about all the changes. Okay. Now this is the major part of your chapter from which you will be getting questions from. Now, why do these changes happen? These changes happen because of something known as hormones. Now, very, very important thing. Okay. So what are hormones? I first write the definition down, right? So hormones that are there. So hormones can be defined as chemical messengers produced by endocrine glands. I'm using some heavy words, but don't worry. Produced by endocrine glands that regulate various changes in the body all right so this is what we mean by hormones so you can say hormones are chemical substances right that is also another word you can use but what i will prefer that you use is the term chemical messengers right so this right here is very very important now we know that hormones are produced by something known as endocrine glands okay so what are endocrine glands so now we already know what are glands. What are glands? Glands are nothing but 
they are a group they are group of cells or they are organs which produce a chemical substance right so this is what we mean by glands now here we see that there are two kinds of glands okay so here we see that there is exocrine glands and we have endocrine glands okay now what is exocrine now exocrine glands are often known as glands with duct okay that means that there will be some group of cells here right and they will be producing some chemical substance and we see that there is a tube or a duct or simply put it is a tube right which will maybe take it to the target cell so wherever the message has to be passed right wherever the message has to be received so here is where the message is uh, what do you say this is where it has to be received and we call this as the target site so in this case we see that whenever there is a duct taking it we call it as exocrine gland so in this case your sweat glands your sebaceous glands your pancreatic you know the pan um, again sweat glands salivary glands sebaceous glands they are all that is there right ma'am is the duct attached to blood no there is no blood involved here it's one tube taking it so if you see right if the sweat glands look like this so normally a sweat gland looks like a you know a coil structure and we see that there is one tube called as the sweat duct which will take the sweat to the surface so that is what we mean by this now this is what we mean by exocrine then what about endocrine on the other hand now for endocrine we see that there will be a group of cells all right and we see that they will produce a chemical substance but what they will do is that they will pour it directly into the blood stream right so we see that they will directly go into the blood stream and these hormones will go along with the blood which is why we also call them as ductless glands okay so are we clear with this i'll explain this once again right exocrine glands are glands with duct which produce certain chemical substance and we see that there is a duct that will transport it from gland to target site while in the case of endocrine glands we know that they will directly pour it into the blood stream heterocrine i'll explain when i talk about pancreas okay i'll talk about it when i talk about pancreas so we are clear with this take a screenshot yes i will move to the side all right everybody so are we clear with this very good very good have you taken what is duct duct is nothing but it is a tube right it is nothing but a simple tube yes <clears throat> it is there for maharashtra board bachcha you can check it out uh, in the description below it's there for maharashtra board as well you can check that out okay yes what are ex ex examples i already told you you can take sweat glands and salivary glands as example endocrine gland i am going to anyway explain it to you so don't worry about endocrine glands okay and we know that from the blood so you see these are all hormones which are there they are chemical substances okay and we see that the cells that are there will have a specific structure which we call as a receptor so a receptor is kind of like how you know in every house there will be a board which says no like for example in my house it will say the ramakrishnans right so that they know that this is my house and this is where my family lives yes so similarly like i'm sure in your house also there will be a board that is there right so in this case we see that just like that for the cell also hormone should know we know that hormones are in the blood and if it has to go to a specific place and create a certain reaction we know that there are these receptors to which it will bind and pass on the message and once they bind we'll see that all the message will be passed okay so that is how hormones work now we have various kinds of hormones but you need to focus on sex hormones mainly which because that's very very important from your chapter right hardik please don't come and spam okay no spamming in the chat now what are sex hormones can you tell me take a guess from the image and make sure that you take a guess from the name itself what are sex hormones can you please tell me in the chat very quickly yes 
Ma'am, hormones are chemical secretions from endocrine system. Yes, they are. Ovaries, chromosomes. Okay, I'm getting a lot of things. Testes, chromosome. Okay. Testes and ovaries. Very good. So we know that sex hormones are those hormones which are involved. So what are those hormones? They are involved in the development and control of reproductive organs and secondary sexual char characteristics. Right? So in this case, as you know, right, sex hormones are those hormones which are involved in the development of reproductive hormones and they are involved in the secondary sexual characteristics. So let's understand the two important sex hormones, right? So we know that in the case of males, the male sex hormone is nothing but the testosterone. So what does the testosterone do? Now we know that the testosterone is produced by the male reproductive organ. So it is produced by the male reproductive organ which is called as the testis. And we know that testis are a pair of structures which are, pre or which are present outside the abdominal cavity and they are enclosed in the scrotum. What is the role of testis? Testis is involved in the development of the male reproductive system. Okay, and it is also respon responsible for the sexual characteristics that we see in males. So everything that we discussed, presence of facial hair, growth of body hair, all of that is regulated by testosterone and also the development of the reproductive organs. Now similarly in females also we see that there is a female, reproduct female sex hormone and we see that the female sex hormone is nothing but estrogen. Alright, so now when you talk about estrogen, we know that it is produced by the female reproductive organ which are the ovaries and we know that ovaries are present in the abdomen and we know that again just like the testis that produces testosterone which is, which is necessary for development of reproductive organ and secondary sexual characters, the estrogen is also responsible for this. Now estrogen See, again, like I told you, estrogen is a female sex hormone, but we also know that ovaries will produce progesterone. And I'm sure that Ankita ma'am has taught you about this, right? Estrogen and progesterone from reproductive, uh, from reproduction in animals. Ankita ma'am has taught this part to all of you, right? She has done it. How many of you remember this? Yes. Oh, she has. Okay, no problem. So if she's not taught it, it's okay because I think probably she would have thought that it might be a little too much. But don't worry about it. So see, progesterone that is there is nothing but it's also known as the pregnancy hormone. So why do we call it as a pregnancy hormone? We know that once implantation takes place and we know that development of embryo takes place, we know that progesterone is necessary for the development. And if you missed out on Kitavam's class, not a problem, you can check it out. Now, estrogen that is there is involved in a very important process, okay? Now, I need you to stay focused in this part. Now, estrogen that is there is involved in a process of ovulation. Now, how many of you know what is ovulation? Can you tell me in the chat? What do we mean by ovulation? Quickly. Yes? Manjeet has given me the answer. He's seen the image and he knows what we're going to talk about, right? Okay, ma'am, not me. Okay. Production. Okay, all right. Very good. It is the release of egg, right? So, release of egg from the ovary is what we call as ovulation. Now, we know that ovulation, once ovulation takes place, we know that the ovum is released into the uh, fallopian tube and we know that the inner lining of the uterus that is there will get thickened to re receive the embryo or the fertilized egg, right? So, we know that there is uterus lining also that happens, yes? But what happens when there is no fertilization, yes? What will happen when there is no fertilization? then we know that the unfertilized egg along with this uterine, the inner lining that is there, right, is no longer necessary because fertilization has not taken place. So the inner lining of the uterus which has, <clears throat> which has blood, thickening of blood and mucus along with the unfertilized egg will be shed off, right. So that is what we mean by menstruation, 
okay and it's a cyclic process that happens which is why we call it as menstrual cycle yes uterus lining is also known as endometrium right now very interesting question as to ma'am why does the lining get thickened so let's understand this so now let's go back to the whole thing that i've explained i gave you a brief understanding now i'm going to go a little more in detail about this okay so we see that every female okay and i need you to understand this and take this seriously Every female is born with a fixed number of eggs. So when the female is in the baby stage, right, a certain number of eggs are already produced and that's it. The eggs are done. But they are at a very primitive stage of development, which is why when the female then attains reproductive maturity or when she enters into adulthood, I mean, uh, adolescent phase, we see that they will resume the development. Okay. And we see that they will develop inside these structures known as follicles. Follicles are what? Nothing but structures inside which the ovum will develop. And at this phase, we see that estrogen level will increase, increase, increase. And when it peaks, ovulation will take place. Okay. Now at the same time, the inner lining of the uterus will get thickened with blood and mucus. Right. So we see that there is blood and mucus thickening. Now, why does this happen? Because we know that if fertilization takes place, then we know that implantation will also happen. So every month the uterus will be like, maybe fertilization will happen, maybe fertilization will happen and then the thickening takes place, right? That is why the thickening happens, which is why what happens is that when fertilization does not happen, right? So when fertilization does not happen, we see that the inner lining of the uterus that is there, right? We see that this will get shed off and this is what we call as menstruation, yes? So we call this as menstruation. So shedding of the inner lining of uterus which has blood and mucus along with unfertilized egg. You have to write this okay. Unfertilized egg is called as menstruation. And because this is a cyclic process, it happens every 28 days, right? It is a cyclic process. Because after menstruation happens, ovum development will take place, ovulation will happen, inner lining of uterus will get thickened. If unfertilization does not take place, menstruation, right? So since it is a cyclic process, we call it as menstrual cycle, all right? Very, very important. Take a screenshot immediately because you will need this. Okay. Super, super important. Are we clear? Quickly, everyone. Are we clear? Yes. Next 15 minutes, we have to wind up. We have quite a bit to finish. So, jaldi, jaldi, tell me. Yes, very good. So, now, of course, we know that this is what is menstruation. And when menstruation takes place, we know that there are some effects of it as well. Such as abdominal cramping, lower back pain and headache along with fatigue, right? So if fertilization takes place, then there will be no for menstruation? Yes. So pregnant women will not have menstruation because now the purpose has been served, right? So they will not experience any menstrual cycle for those nine months, all right? Only when pregnancy does not take place, then we know, or when fertilization does not take place, then menstruation happens. And these are some effects. And now we know why those effects happen because the inner lining of uterus is getting shed off, right? And as a result, lower abdominal pain, sometimes headache and all of that will be there. It's not a problem at this particular time, especially at a young age. Please make sure that you take care of your body, take ample amount of rest and make sure that you, you know, eat well. Or in case if you experience abdominal phase that is there, I mean, if you have ex extreme abdominal pain, you can use a hot water bag it will definitely help you and yes Aditya you are correct that is the reason why the testis is located outside because it requires a slightly lesser temperature for sperm production so now with this like I told you there are three things to know so during adolescence phase we know that there are reproductive changes and during adulthood is when the person will be fully would have attained the reproductive maturity now in all these cases, I told you that there are a fixed number of eggs, right? So we see that there is a fixed number of eggs. And we see that the development or we see that there is an onset 
of which menstruation starts, right? So when the first menstrual cycle happens or the first menstruation take place, we call it as menarche. And from then on, we know that the uh, individual or the female will enter the reproductive cycle or what we call as the reproductive phase. And this is the phase of life when the female can, you know, reproduce, right? So that is what we mean by the reproductive phase, when an individual can reproduce. And that is normally during adulthood. And during this whole phase, she will be also able to menstruate. But after a point when the fixed number of eggs are gone, there's a point after which no more eggs are there in the female body, right? So that is when she will experience her last one, right? Her last phase or the last, men, uh, last phase of it which is what we call as menopause. So menopause is when there is stoppage, exactly. So when there is stoppage of menstrual cycle, we call it as menopause. So here roughly between 10 to 12 years is when menarche starts and around 45 to 50 years, the woman will enter menopause. Are we clear with this everyone? Are we clear? Right? My men menstrual cycle always proper See, menstrual cycle depends on your hormones now, right? You know that estrogen is involved. Along with that, there are various other hormones that are involved. So your diet, what you eat, and all of those things matter in production of hormones. Which is why normally what happens is that imbalance in diet can lead to imbalance in production of hormones. So super, super important to understand that. Yes? So very quickly, everybody, here's a quick question for all of you on this. Right? Quick question. Are we clear with this? The reproductive phase of a woman lies between dash and menopause. Yes? What is the correct answer to this? Ovulation, menstruation, menarche or puberty. The reproductive phase of a woman lies between what and what? Yes, very good. It is menarche. The answer is menarche. So you have menarche. Then you have menstruation here. And then of course you have menopause all right so this is something that you need to know now this is the main part of your chapter right and we learned about how our reproductive organs also function as your endocrine gland and also function as your endocrine glands but there are various other endocrine glands that are there in our body such as pituitary thyroid pancreas adrenal and testis now I need 10 minutes of your time. I will not be able to take a lot of doubts because 6.30 again we have another class. So everybody just listen to me whatever doubts you have. I may not be able to clarify it today but we'll have a separate doubt clearing session where I'll take all your doubts, explain the concepts more times for understanding. Right? So I'll explain most of it. I'll be explaining the rest of your doubts probably in another session. Very sorry for today because we're running out of time a little bit. So let's get started in understanding about pituitary gland. Yes, I know I have class in class 10. I'm coming there by 6.30. Okay? So first, let's learn about the pituitary gland. Alright? So the pituitary gland that is there is also known as the master gland. Right? And we know that this particular gland is located at the base of the brain. Alright? And we see that this, this gland is responsible for producing the growth hormone. Along with that, it also produces various stimulating hormones okay so what are stimulating hormones these are hormones that control the functioning of other endocrine glands right which is why we call it as the master gland and along with that we see that their main role is to regulate the functioning of other endocrine glands now next up we have thyroid gland now thyroid gland that is there is a butterfly shaped gland which is located in the neck region and it's actually one of the largest endocrine glands. Now we see that it's responsible for producing a hormone known as thyroxine and we know that this is necessary for regulating the metabolic processes of the body. Now for production of thyroxine, we know that or we see that iodine is necessary. So iodine in our diet is very very important. Which is why most often than not you will see that there is iodized salt, right? And iodized salt is necessary because that's how iodized salt and along with various other things that we eat, we get iodine. But if there's not enough iodine, we see that this affects the production of thyroxine. 
and as a result we see that there will be a swelling in the neck region because now your thyroid gland is overworking itself to produce thyroxine and this swelling which is formed as a result of the deficiency of iodine is what we call as goiter so what is goiter goiter is swelling in neck region why does this happen due to deficiency of iodine so two points to remember now thyroxine is not something that we observe only in our body we see that this is something which is produced in most animals as well so we've learned about the process of metamorphosis right wherein we know that <clears throat> we know that metamorphosis is a drastic change that we observe which an organism undergoes and this process of metamorphosis is also regulated by the production of iodine in the body of the frogs and we see that in this case the iodine that is there is supplied by the water that is there so the water will have iodine in it which is utilized by the tadpoles and then they undergo metamorphosis ma'am goiter disease is of two types yes it is but harsimran maybe in another session i'll teach you because i'm running short of time a little okay so we'll have a separate class wherein i do all of those things in greater detail all right so here i'm just going to touch upon ncrt and i'll go a little more in greater detail about it that's all so now of course we'll talk about the pancreas that are there right so we know that pancreas is present just behind the stomach and it is responsible for producing insulin now insulin is what regulates the blood glucose in the body now a lot of you are asking me ma'am what is a heterocrine gland or a mixed gland pancreas is an example of this pancreas acts as an endocrine gland by producing hormones like insulin but it acts as an exocrine gland by producing digestive juices right so here is where it has its exocrine function which is why because it shows both endocrine and exocrine function is why we call it as a mixed gland then of course we have adrenal gland which is located on top of the kidneys which produces adrenaline and it is like i told you located on top mainly this is what is responsible for the fight or flight situation right so normally during some emergency situations we know that you know our heart starts racing we start to get very anxious right so all of these things that we experience is because of the adrenal gland so very quickly everybody here's a quick question for you which among the following glands are responsible for regulating the blood glucose levels so for those of you who have questions in the class i know that you have a lot of doubts but i have only 4 minutes with me so i'm going to quickly wind it up and i'll have a separate doubt clearing class okay please do attend that class and if you really want the answer for this today let me know in the comment section of this video i will answer to you yes very good correct answer is pancreas which produces insulin so with this we have learned all about the endocrine glands now quickly we will move into reproductive health now we know that health is nothing but a state of physical mental and social well being and we need to maintain our reproductive health because now we know that our body is undergoing various changes which is why it is important to have a balanced diet where we eat all the essential nutrients drink plenty of water and make sure that we eat food which is rich in fiber maintain a proper personal hygiene where we bathe regularly wear clean clothes you know in uh, females change sanitary pads regularly and of course right make sure that we have physical and mental well being by regularly exercising and having a positive mindset and of course it's important that there is awareness about drugs say no to alcohol cigarettes because this is the time when people will you know get exposed to these things but as students of biology we must say no right so everyone this is the last thing where we're going to talk about sexually transmitted diseases as well now diseases like aids are normally transmitted through sexual contact right but we also know that if an individual contracts it it could be through pregnancy blood transfusion and sharing of needles so it is important to understand this right now i know i rushed the last part a little bit and yes please do read the chapter as soon as you finish but this is a very small chunk that is there right so everyone i hope we are clear with most of the concepts that we have discussed today 
Are we clear? And tomorrow again what I will do is I will make sure that at 4 p.m. So tomorrow's class is going to be at 4 p.m. But we will do a doubt clearing session around that time. So whatever doubts are there, we will take it up in that class, right? So we will have more time. But since today's class was a one shot, I hope you found this class helpful. Yes? And any more doubts that are there, let me know in the comment section. Because you know that Baiju's 6, 7, and 8 has always got you covered. So if you enjoyed today's class, do not forget to like this video, share this video with your friends and stay subscribed to our channel. Yes, quiz will be happening very soon. But up until then, everybody's hoping to see you all very soon again, everyone. Bye-bye and have a nice day.